I'm Derek Walker, the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church. We're in a series called Christian Foundations, and the whole theme of this theory, series really is that Christ is our foundation. Uh, not knowledge of Christ or teaching about Christ, but Christ himself. He is a living foundation, and we are living stones built upon the living foundation who is Christ. And we've been talking about living in victory over sin. And because this is such an important subject, and uh, such a, a subject really that is not taught very much, you know, obviously people are taught you shouldn't sin, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, uh, but it isn't really taught about how we can truly live a life that is a life of victory over sin. And, um, and this needs to be taught. So I'm spending a bit of extra time in this series really to cover this and to go through the Romans chapters 5 to 8. And last time we covered Romans chapter 6. And the whole idea of this is, the background if you like, is that we live in an interesting situation now. Because, first of all, before we were born again, we had no choice but to live under the power of sin. And we saw that the reason for that is that when Adam sinned, the sin nature, they're called sin in Scripture, whenever sin is written in the singular, it refers to the sin nature in our flesh. There's something in our flesh that causes us to sin. And before we're born again, in a way, we will inevitably come under the power of that sin nature. It affects our thinking, it affects our emotions, and we are, as it were, a slave to sin. And Jesus himself said that in, 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 in John 8. He says, uh, he who commits sin is a slave of sin. But then he went on to say, I've come to set you free. If the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. And so we want to talk about how Jesus actually sets us free from the power of sin. And the whole key is learning to live out from a new foundation. You see, before we were born again, we just had no choice, really. Because we were spiritually dead, uh, we couldn't live the way God made us to live, which is out from our spirits. The way God intended is that he would be the Lord over our spirit and we would receive life from his spirit and we would live out from that foundation. But when Adam sinned, man, he died spiritually and his spirit was cut off from the life of God. And instead now he became ruled by the sin nature that came into his flesh. And then through physical birth, all mankind has been born into that situation. As it were, we're born in sin. And so our, man is born spiritually dead, and even worse than that now, there is a new power governing his life, which is the sin nature, which causes us to live independently from God. So that's a right mess <laughs> we were in. And so uh, now, God, how did God fix that? Well, we've, what we've been seeing on the last two episodes was that God actually provided a solution in Christ through his death on the cross, he made a provision, he paid the price, whereby we can, if we put our trust in Jesus as Lord, he takes us out of Adam, praise God, and he puts us into Christ. And our sinful state in Adam is removed, and instead we are now righteous in Christ. We now have right standing with God, and that means we have access to his grace. And on the basis of that, we were given a new birth. Our spirit was born again. We became a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. And now the Holy Spirit lives inside us. In other words, now God has a new base of operation inside us. Like we said, when we accept Christ, Christ is our foundation, it says. The, that is laid inside us. We, we have Christ lives in us. Praise God. And now we have the potential, the ability to actually live out from that new life. And, and to, as we learn to do that more and more, we will experience freedom from sin. The other way of living, the old way of living, is when we live out from our own soul. But when we do that, even when we're trying to do the right things, we are frustrated. And the Bible calls that the weakness of the flesh. The more we try and live in our own strength, even trying to do God's rules, as it were, uh, because we're trying to do it in our flesh, we fail. 
because our flesh is under the power of the sin nature. So the only way is to actually learn a whole new way of living. And we saw that, that, that that's the reason why the foundational doctrine of Christ, the first two are repentance from dead works and faith toward God. So we've got to turn away from that old way of living where we're do, trying to do it in our own strength, which produces dead works, to a new way of living where we are trusting God. We're looking to God as our source, to Christ as our foundation, and looking to him as the source of our life, our love, our righteousness, and everything for our life. We're, we're drawing upon his life. We're living out of his life. We might know all the right things we ought to do, but somehow we can't do it in the flesh. And we come to an end of ourselves, and we repent of tr even trying to do that. And now we, we, we learn to surrender to Christ. And so this new life is a life of victory because what we saw in Romans chapter 6, um, if I very quickly summarize it, and we covered that last time, is that um, the Bible says that we died to sin. Now clearly, your body hasn't died to sin, nor is your mind and your emotions. The, the sin nature, if you allow it, will very much have an effect on you. But it's your spirit that's died to sin. The Bible says that you are, at the core of your being, you're a spirit. You are made in the image of God who is spirit. God breathed his spirit into Adam. And so that's your connection with God, is your spirit. And so God gave you a new spirit so you can worship God again. You are connected to God through your spirit. And Romans 6 says how this happened, that when you were baptized into Jesus, you were taken out of Adam, you were put into Jesus, and now then you were identified with his death, burial, and resurrection. That means your old man, your old spirit, was crucified with Christ, died with Christ, buried with Christ, and now, as Christ was raised from the dead, you, your spirit, is resurrected. And that is the new man. Your new man is the result of the resurrection life of Jesus being applied to your spirit. And if we can only just learn to live out of that new man, believe in who we are now as Christ, in our new identity, and live out from that, we will experience victory in our life. And so Romans 6 talks about that that's done that, that God has done that. He says that your old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. Now, literally, we said in, that your old man was crucified, and so you are now a new man, a new creation in Christ, in your spirit. When it talks about the body of sin, it's not talking about the old man. It's talking about the sin nature in your flesh. And it says the sin nature might be done away with. Literally, that means neutralized. What that means is, you know, like in, in a sports game, for instance, man-to-man uh, -man marking, you know, and I always, you know, the, the, there's a, there was a classic game from when I was growing up where uh, Beckenbauer was put on Bobby Charlton, man-to-man -man marked him. I think this was the, uh, was this the World Cup final? Anyway, and, um, and so he neutralised Bobby Charlton. And, uh, and people were thinking, well, Bobby Charlton's playing a, a useless game. We, we, Alf Ramsey took him off. But then that set Beckenbauer free, and the game swung in favour of Germany. And so, in the same way, the sin nature is still there, but it's neutralised by what God has done. And that's what he's saying, is that while we live in the Spirit, now that we have a new man, we're a new creation. As we walk in the spirit, the old, the sin nature rather, is neutralized. Uh, it's, it's not able to exercise power over you. But the moment you walk in the flesh, you come straight under that sin nature again. So he says, knowing this, that your old man, was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be neutralized, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. We don't, now as reborn believers, we don't have to be slaves of sin. We have a choice. And if we surrender to the Spirit, we will be free. The sin nature will be neutralized in our life. Hallelujah. For he who has died has been freed from sin. So God has made provision for us to be free from 
that sin nature. And then he goes and says, likewise, reckon yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. So your spirit is alive to God. It's free from the sin nature. And if you live in that spirit, you will be free. And then he goes on and says, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies. In other words, it's still there, but you have a choice now to not let it reign. And the way you do that is by realizing, don't try and do it in your flesh. Don't live according to law, where you're trying to keep the rules in your own strength, but rather surrender. He goes on and says, surrender yourselves and surrender your bodies as instruments of righteousness. Surrender yourself to God and trust the Holy Spirit now to start guiding your life and writing his laws in your heart and showing you what to do. And, and he will lead you step by step. And, um, and so that's Romans 6. So we're going moving on now to Romans 7 where he particularly deals with the issue of the law. You see, because Paul, some people, you know, are kind of from, from a, aren't interested necessarily in being good people, you know, and so they just commit sin and, and so on. But in the case of Paul, he was a religious person. He was a, um, a God-fearing Jew and uh, he had the law of God and, and there are religious people, if you like, like Paul, who think they understand God gave them a law, a list of things they ought to do, and now they're trying to do it in their own strength. But what Paul discovered is he didn't find freedom in that. He didn't find joy in that. In, in fact, it was, it was a grind. And more than that, he, was, it, he failed. And though you can kind of put on a good outward act, uh, if you really work hard at it, yet Paul realized that in, on the inside of him, he was not pleasing to God. He was full of bad attitudes and wrong things on the inside. So all this law keeping didn't actually make him a good person on the inside. And part of Romans 7 describes this journey, and, but a lot of Christians can be like this too. This is also applies to Christians because we know that we should do the word of God. And so we can think that what God requires of us is that we just learn all the rules and the principles and then we try our very best to keep them. And we're living under law. And that isn't the life God wants us to live because we're still doing it from our own strength, from our own soul. And so Romans 7 is about the journey where he realizes he's got to abandon that way of living under law because he just comes under the sin nature. And the more he tries, the more he is frustrated under the sin nature. And then he discovers the new way of living in Romans 8. So let's have a look there. Or he says, Romans 7, Do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law. And he's talking about the law of Moses, but also it could be any law system that you are living by. That the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So he's, he's using an analogy of marriage that while they are married, the Jews, as it were, were married to the law. And their first um, obligation was to, to keep the law. And, and so they lived under law. Uh, and um, the problem... And he goes on to say, there, so then, while her husband lives, she mar so if while her husband lives, she marries another man, she'll be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law so that she's no adulteress, although she's married another man. And what it's saying is that to be set free from the law um, requires a death. But then Paul does a twist. Therefore, my brethren, you have also become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you might be married to another. And what he's saying is, it wasn't that the law was, died. The law, the law of Moses in particular, it did not die. Okay, but we died. Remember, we died with Christ. And now we are a new creation. And through that death, that released us from the obligation to keep that law. We are no longer, as it were, married to the law in that sense. And it says the reason God released us from the law is that we might be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. So he says rather than you actually trying to keep the law in your own strength, the idea now that you are married to Christ, you're looking to Christ 
and you're trusting in Christ and he will give you the power to bear fruit from God. So he says, he's, he's explaining that we are not to live under law, but we are to, to actually, our life is to proceed from our fellowship with Christ. For when we are in the flesh, the sinful passions which are aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. And here you see the sin nature is in the flesh. And what he was saying is that the law actually arouses the sin nature. The, the more you try and keep it in your own strength, the more the sin nature is activated and producing death in your life. But it's the, notice it's in the members. But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we, we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. And notice that is a very important phrase. He says Christ's death provided uh, us uh, the legal exit from being bound to the law so that we could serve Christ and live in the newness of the spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. You see, when we're trying to live in the oldness of the letter, that is when we're trying to take all these laws and principles and do them in our own strength. And it's old, it's the soul life, it's an imitation of Christianity, but it's not the reality because it doesn't have the newness and the freshness of Christ's own life, Christ fulfilling the law through us. And so he says we've got to let go of the old way, the oldness of the letter, and instead start to live by faith in the newness of the Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? He said, are, you, are you criticizing the law of God? Absolutely not, he says. On the contrary, I wouldn't have known sin except through the law. He says, I'm grateful to the law because it actually made me aware of my sin nature. The harder I tried to keep it, the more I frustrated. It made me realize I have this sin nature here but I need God's way to overcome it. For I w in particular, he says, I wouldn't have known covetousness unless the law had said you shall not covet. See, that's the problem with religious people is that often their list of rules are external. You shouldn't smoke, you shouldn't do all these external things. And, and you can, to a degree, keep an external rule book so that men think, you know, you're, you're impressive. But the law does not reach your heart, cannot change your heart. And the one commandment of the Ten Commandments applies directly to the heart. You shall not covet. And he realized that he was convicted at that point, that he couldn't deal with the covetousness in him. The law did not have the power to do that. And so he was a lawbreaker. But sin, it says, the sin nature, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desires. So the sin nature actually, uh, sorry, trying to keep the law actually activated the sin nature in Paul even more. And he was honest with himself and he saw, although he was a good Pharisee on the outside, he was full of evil desire on the inside. Well, we saw that in his mur murderous uh, attempts to kill the Christians. For apart from the law, sin was dead. The, sin, uh, the law activates the sin nature. I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. So he's, this is his frustrating frustration as a law-abiding Jew. But also, I think, possibly for a time as a Christian, I think us Christians, we face this same frustration because we're trying to do the right thing in our own strength. And he says, and the commandment which was to bring life, I found to bring death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it, it killed me. Therefore, the law is holy, the commandment holy, just, and good. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But it, it, I'm not, he says, I'm not blaming the law. The law is good. But the problem is sin. It's the sin nature in the flesh. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what was good so that sin, through the commandment, might become exceeding sinful. So in other words, that trying to keep the law actually activated the sin nature in him because it, he was trusting in himself all the more. For we know that the law is spiritual, but here's the problem. I am carnal, sold under sin. In other words, Adam sold, sold us out. 
and now we're under the power of the sin nature. And so the more I try and do it in the flesh, the more I fail. For what I am doing, I, I do not understand. For what I will to do, I, that I do not practice, but what I hate, that I do. Now he's talking about again about he is born again now. He wants to do the right thing, but he finds himself doing the wrong thing because he's doing it in his own strength. If I then, if then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it's good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. So here he says, it's the cause of my failures is the sin nature in me because I've been under the power of it. It isn't I, the real me is a spirit who is a reborn spirit who wants to do the will of God, who wants to love, who wants to walk in righteousness, but there's this sin nature that's constantly tripping me up. And it dwells in me, he says, it dwells in my flesh. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. In other words, don't try and do it yourself because you don't have what it takes in your flesh. The sin nature's in your flesh. Nothing good dwells. For to me is present, for to will is present with me in his spirit, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do I do not do, but the evil I will not to do that I practice. Why is that? Because of the sin nature. You want to do the right thing in your spirit. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. It's the sin nature. And so the key victory is victory over this sin nature. If I then, if I, I find then a law that evil is present with me, in the sin nature, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, in my spirit. But I see another law in my members, in the members of my body. That's where the sin nature is, um, is located. Warring against the law of my mind. And so there's this battle between the spirit and the sin nature, and they're both trying to consult, control uh, our, our, our soul. Bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Notice the law of sin, the sin nature, is in the members of the body. Oh, wretched man that I am. He's, he, he's facing his re, the reality. It, it, it's terrible. Terrible frustration. He wants to do the right thing, but he f fails. Who will deliver me from this body of death? That's the sin nature, because the sin nature causes death. Who is going to, and it's in your body. Who's going to deliver me from this? How can I get out of this frustration? I And then... He realizes the answer, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And he realizes that by submitting to Jesus as Lord, he will escape the power of the sin nature. That's he, Jesus is the key. It's not trying harder isn't the key, it's trusting in Jesus Christ the Lord. So then he concludes, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Then he goes into chapter 8, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Full stop. That extra phrase that some translations have should not be there. It belongs in verse 4. First of all, you've got to realize God has already forgiven you. He's made you righteous. So now you are on solid ground and you have access to the grace of God because there is no condemnation. Jesus has dealt with that sin. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life is stronger than the law of sin and death. And as we trust in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, we are automatically free from the law of sin and death. I said last time, it's like an aeroplane taking off. The law of gravity is still there, trying to pull down. The sin nature is still there, but through the power of the engines and the law of lift, the plane rises up above and, and over supersedes that other law. Praise God. The spirit, if you walk in the spirit, it automatically overcomes the law of sin. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Notice that's the problem is the weakness of the flesh. Trying to do God's rules in your own strength. God solved the problem by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. He didn't have sinful flesh, but he appeared like us. On account of sin, he came on account of the sin nature, he condemned sin in the flesh. Now this is great news, Jesus judged sin in the flesh, that means the sin nature, although it's still in your flesh, it no longer has any authority over you, it's been judged. 
just like Satan's been judged. He has no authority over you. You don't have to do what, you, what it tells you to do. That, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. He says what he's done is he's neutralized the sin nature. He's judged it so that now, if you walk according to the Spirit, you will find yourself fulfilling the righteous requirement of the law. You'll find yourself walking in love because the love of God flows from the Spirit. You will no longer be just imitating love. You you will be loving. The love of God is in your heart and all you have to do is walk in the Spirit, is live out from the foundation God's given. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And so he says you just have to set your mind on the spirit, live out from that foundation, look to God as your source and you will experience life and peace. But if you set your mind on the flesh and trust in yourself and look to yourself as the source, you will discover frustration and death. For the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. If whatever you do in the flesh, however good it might look on the outside, it doesn't please God. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but you are in the Spirit. God has provided you a spiritual position now before God. You can live under grace, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. Now, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of the sin nature, sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. But if you, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. These are the sons of God. Thank you for watching. You can watch more of our teachings on our Oxford Bible Church Roku channel and Derek Walker YouTube channel. You're most welcome to join us at our church services which are every Sunday at 11am and 6pm at Cheney School, Headington, Oxford, OX3 7QH. You can order CDs, DVDs, books and other great products from our online shop at www.oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk or by calling 01865 515 086.